Hello everybody and welcome to the first episode of the Minecraft Cinematic Mod Showcase Series How to Make Your Own Cinematic Videos Thing. Yeah, that's not the official name, but that's what I'm calling it for now. Anyway, in today's episode, we will be looking at the replay mod and how to use it to get the best cinematic videos possible. Now, the replay mod is a fantastic tool for Minecraft cinematic creators, and it is by far one of the things I use the most when I'm making my videos. Some of the features that it has, it can do slow motion, it has multiple interpolation algorithms, it can stop time, speed up time, and the biggest perk of that is no matter what PC you have, you can render out 1080p60 maximum shader settings video, and it'll just take longer if your computer is weaker. It'll still come out a perfectly smooth video at the end. The only thing it's missing is keyframeable FOV, but maybe that'll be added in the future. I used Replay Mod, CUDA shaders, and Biome Bundle to get all the footage you're seeing in the background right now. And the next episode will probably be on Buyer Cam Mod and how to use the Optifine Shader Pack settings. Now, if you're watching this video, I assume you already know how to install Minecraft mods, and if you don't, then you're probably not ready to be making cinematic videos. I'll have links to all the mods and shader packs that I use in the description down below. I'll probably go over Biome Bundle and the Buyer Cam and Optifine in the next episode. But anyway, let's get in to the replay mod tutorial, and I hope you guys understand it. If you don't, try watching it twice, and then maybe you'll get it by the end. Also, open up the replay mod, get some hands-on experience, try it out, and yeah, I go over all the features in this video. If I missed anything, let me know, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. Here we go. We are going to be going over the replay mod, probably one of the most useful mods for making cinematics. It's especially useful for recording things where players have to move around or animals have to move around instead of just making the camera go and hoping that people move in the right way that they're supposed to. With the replay mod, everything I'm doing right now is being recorded. As you can see, it says recording in the top left. Then I can view it from any angle afterwards and export it as a video file. Now, I'm going to save some time with this tutorial and just assume that all of you know how to install mods. And by default, replay mod will record whatever server or single player world you join. And when you disconnect or save and quit to title, you go to replay viewer, it will be there. Sometimes you need to cancel and come back a few times, but eventually it'll be there. So here we are in the replay. As you can see, there's two timelines up top, and when I joined, it was all nighttime. There's a bunch of different hotkeys you have. As you can see, we have add event marker, capture thumbnail, clear keyframes, open keyframe presets, play pause, player overview, replay mod settings, reset camera tilt, roll, clockwise, counterclockwise, synchronize, toggle lighting, blah, 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 all that stuff. And I will be going over those. First, let me get to the point where I was doing the intro bit. And guys, before I continue, one thing you need to know is that whenever you want to access something in the replay mod, you have to press T to free your mouse and then go click on stuff. So yeah, keep that in mind. Anytime I go to mouse for something, I'm pressing T and then I'm mousing over all this stuff. So in the replay, as you can see, I can fly around. We still have shaders applied. And if I hit play, you can see this is what I was doing as I was recording the intro. And I can just hit play pause right here. Now in the replay mod, you have two different timelines. You have the world time up here, which is how long you were on the world or server. So I was on this single player world for four minutes and 20 seconds. And this is your keyframe timeline where the camera will move in a certain amount of time. As a demonstration, if I was to move the camera right here and press add position keyframe, move it ahead 10 seconds and add another position keyframe. If I was to press play, as you can see, the camera moves from one point to the other in 10 seconds. Also, if you move this little cursor around, it will give a preview of where the camera will be in real time, which is quite nice. Now you may be wondering, oh, well this is frozen in time, how do I fix that? Well, you do that with time keyframes. I just inserted time keyframes at the same exact time just to keep it simple. You can insert time keyframes no matter which way you're facing. I can be looking straight to the ground, it doesn't matter. All that matters is the time. So if I was to add a time keyframe right now, and then hit play, and pause right there, move this cursor to right here, and add another time keyframe, However much time just passed between me playing and pausing it is how much time will pass in these 10 seconds. I hope you got that. Anyway, as you can see, if I was to play this, every time the replay mod has to go backwards in time, it the screen goes to the dirt. But as you can see now, the camera is doing its movement and a little there's a little bit of a bug with the replay mod where the character kind of gets teleported over. But as you can see, the time from when I played it to when I paused it passed in 10 seconds. Now this can be super useful for time lapses. For example, if I was to set time keyframe and position keyframe, move the camera all the way up here and set it to 10 seconds and then go to go like four minutes in the future 
set another time, another position keyframe, give it a play, and as you can see, we've got a little time lapse of me walking around doing the intro to this video. So by now, I hope you figured out how to do keyframes. Now let's get into some hotkeys. As you may have noticed, wherever you're facing is wherever the camera will be when you insert a position keyframe. But you can also use J and L on your keyboard to tilt the camera, which is a pretty neat effect. Now one thing the replay mod does not have is keyframeable FOV. Unfortunately, you're gonna need to leave that to buyer cam mod. Some other things we have is if you press C, you can clear all the keyframes you have. If you're like, oh man, this camera path's terrible, just get rid of it. Another thing you can do is save camera paths. If you hit X, you can save your camera path as whatever you call it. I'm just gonna call it GGG, and so there it is. There's my camera path. So now, if I was to erase all my keyframes, I can press X again, click on GGG, load it, and my camera path is back. You should probably do this often, and you can even press X, select it, and hit overwrite to save again instead of saving a new one each time, which is kind of useful. Say you have the camera tilted too far one way and you can't really get it perfectly centered, you can hit K right in between J and L and it will reset the camera tilt every time. Just hit K. There is P to play and pause the replay conveniently, but I don't really use that much. If you hit B, you get the player overview. If you're on a server, you can click on any of these players to go where they are. So if I was to click on me, boom, I'm in first person mode and we'll get on to entity keyframes in a second here. Toggle lighting doesn't do anything when you have shaders on. You don't really ever need to use that, really. And you can press H to toggle your path preview. So you can see my little camera path right here that I made just as an example. I can press H to show it and hide it in case it's getting messy. Because if you have a long camera path, it can get kind of messy. Now it's time for the one thing that I found slightly confusing when starting out. Well, let's say you want 10 seconds of time to pass during 10 seconds of camera path. So you could say, oh, I could press this, wait for 10 seconds to pass, and then add my next keyframe at 10 seconds. But no, that's inaccurate. Your character might be moving a tiny bit too fast or a tiny bit too slow. So to get around that, we can add a time and position keyframe. We can hit play pause until it stops where we want it to. You know, just give it till whenever. And after however much time passes that you want, you can position the camera wherever you want it to be, press V, and it will automatically move the cursor the amount of time that passed. Then you can just add a time and position keyframe, and if we were to watch this, it will be a perfect real-time Minecraft camera path of me moving at a normal speed, just walking around. See, it doesn't look too fast, doesn't look too slow, just me walking around. Now V, which is called synchronized timeline, is based on the speed. If I was to go to eight times speed, play it like this really fast, pause it, then press V, you can see it only moved it forward like less than a second. That's because I only had it played and then paused for less than a second. It only will synchronize how long you played and then paused it. So if you want perfect eight times speed, just play it however long you want, then pause it, then press V. But if you want it to go faster, you can always just take your mouse up here and skip way ahead, add a keyframe, and then it'll move at like 20 times speed, 30 times speed, whatever it is. So hopefully that's not too difficult to comprehend. If you still don't get it, try watching this video again, but that is like 90% of what you'll be doing in the replay mod. Another thing you can do is spectator keyframe. So let's get a good example going. Say I have a keyframe right here and uh, a little bit of time pass and then the camera will move to right here. But then I wanna see the world from my perspective. If I left click on me, I am, I go to spectator view. Well, if I can left click on me in the right spot, there we go. Now, if I hit play pause, let it go for a little while, eh, whatever, then hit V. As you can see, now it says add spectator keyframe. Now spectator keyframes are super cool because they allow you to just view from the eyes of whatever you're spectating at. So we can just add that there. We can let it play for a while. You know, press V, add another spectator keyframe, play it. Mm, all right, and then you can press shift to get out of spectator view. So let's add another keyframe right here. So we've got two normal camera keyframes, and then it goes in to spectator mode where it stays for a little while and then comes over here. Now let's see how this looks. Camera moves over here. Oh, I think I rotated one too many times, so I'm spinning around a bit, but then it goes inside my face. Boom, just like that. And then first person, and then the camera moves out of me. 
Beautiful. Those are spectator keyframes. We can just hit X, go to GGG, overwrite. Better save our camera paths. Don't wanna, don't wanna lose them. So that's pretty much all the replay mod can do. Now, this is for the 1.10 and up version. Now there's extra features in the 1.8 version of the replay mod. You can import pictures and images that'll float in the sky and you can have the camera go through them. And there's a shoulder camera feature, but those have not been implemented into the 1.10 and 1.11 versions of the replay mod. But now that you have your camera path and you're like, great, I want to render this so you can watch it. You can watch it right here to get a preview, but all these lines and stuff are in the way. Now, we want a render of it. So you can hit render camera path, and this whole thing comes up. Now, normally, MP4 high quality will look good enough. You can just hit that, hit render, and you'll probably be okay. But there's a bunch of other settings down here, like render name tags. So you want to see the name tags, or you don't. Pretty simple there. You can try and chroma key the sky, which I wouldn't really recommend. You can make the video a 360 video, but you can only do that if the video is a resolution that is uh, 360, which is like 1920 by like... 2000 I don't honestly remember and you can also add anti-aliasing which is really bad on this screen I don't recommend doing anti-aliasing on this screen it makes it take super long instead I recommend doing it on the shader screen right up here I find that this anti-aliasing works way better and it's way faster anyway let's go back to the render camera path screen what I like to do is do mp4 custom bitrate 50 megabits per second at a frame rate of 60. Now you can set the frame rate all the way to 10 and all the way to 120 frames per second. You can set the resolution to anything. For 1080p it's 1920 by 1080 but you could easily do 3840 by 2160 and there you go. Oh that's 39. There you go. You could do that and then you've got an 8k video going on. An 8k 60 fps video that's perfectly smooth because of the replay mod. It's really quite amazing. So after you have all of your settings good, just for quickness, I will make this a 300 by 320 video. I do not recommend this at all. And I'll turn the bit rate down to five. But before we render this, there's one more thing that you can do. You can open up a render queue. Now say you have that camera path and you want to render like 10 out. So you make the camera path, you can go to open queue and you can save current configuration, boom, just like that close it and then you can go back and make another camera path open queue save the current configuration boom then if you open the queue when you're all done you can hit the render button and it'll render one after another all of the different camera paths so that's a great way to make like you know 15 camera paths on say one server hit render and then go to bed as it renders in 8k overnight or something like that i will warn you 8k you're gonna need like at least 16 gigabytes of ram at least for 4k you should be able to do 4k on 8 gigs of ram i would recommend more though like it's gonna be it's gonna be a little rough but for 1080p you should be able to do it easy peasy no matter what but i don't need to use the queue right now because i'm just rendering one thing so let's go ahead and give it a render on the rendering screen we can pause we can resume and we can cancel and we can also show the preview like I said, I've rendered it in a super low resolution that I would not recommend to anyone. And uh, yeah, it's rendering really fast because I think it's rendering faster than real time right now. Look at this. Look at it go. Boom. Video rendered made that beautiful sound. You can upload it directly to YouTube, which I wouldn't really recommend. I'd much more recommend to click the open video folder button. And as you can see here, these are all of my renders, much of which you probably saw during the intro. Like, look at this. Oh, this is pretty. Oh, this is, this is so good looking. I also have a 4K series of PNGs that I've rendered out. Uh, so yeah, this, this is like 1,210 PNGs that are all 4K. Yeah, I wouldn't really recommend rendering as PNGs. This is taking up 13 gigabytes just for like a 20 second clip. Unless you're going for the ultimate quality, I wouldn't recommend rendering as a series of PNGs. Maybe I would if you're trying to go for like a desktop background kind of thing and you'll just hit render and then cancel Just it'll make a few PNGs for you and then stop But if you're going for videos not highly recommended it takes up so much space and oh, yeah And here's the 4k image guys. Look at this. Oh, this is so pretty we can pan around 4k is so high res anyway slightly off topic wouldn't recommend uploading directly to YouTube just open the folder drag it out and uh, Then close it out and then you're put back in right with your camera path and you can make a new camera path you can do whatever you can keep going but anyway guys that is going to do it for part one of the minecraft cinematic mod showcase series thing how to make your own cinematic mods not quite sure what i'm calling it yet but anyway if you're interested in making minecraft cinematics this is the series for you we're going to be going over buyer cam next episode that's going to do it for this episode thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one goodbye